Greetings, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This is going to be part four of the mystery of Babylon. We're going to do a little bit of a recap. So to see the fulfillment of the Old Testament, you got to read the New Testament. And to understand the foundation of the New Testament, you got to read the Old Testament. So let's go to Daniel chapter 7. Daniel saw the four beasts. We're going to start in chapter 7. All right, so Daniel chapter 7, verse 7. He sees the fourth beast, which I believe is the end time beast. And then we're going to go to Revelation. After this I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible and strong exceedingly, and it had great iron teeth. Ah, iron teeth. Now, when you see what uh, the first time usage of a word in the Bible Usually that gives you a good sound reference of the meaning or behind it. Iron teeth. So let's go to Genesis chapter 4 and take a look at the first time the word iron appears in the Bible. In Genesis chapter 4 and verse 16. And Cain, oh yeah, Cain, Cain and Abel, that Cain. And Cain went out from the presence of the Lord and dwelt in the land of Nod, on the east of Eden. And Cain knew his wife. Now, where did Cain get his wife from? That's always a good question. Uh, I covered that in a uh, previous Bible study. If anybody's interested, uh, leave me a comment, shoot me an email, and uh, I'll show you something interesting. And Cain knew his wife, and she conceived and bare Enoch. Now, this is Cain's Enoch, not uh, the, the one that the Lord took to heaven. And he builded a city. Now, when a guy gets married and has a, uh, you know, has a wife and has a kid, you don't build a city. Okay? you got to have a bunch of people to build a city. And he called the name of the city after the name of his son Enoch. And unto Enoch was born Irad, and Irad begat... Mahujel and Mahujel begat Methusel, and Methusel begat Lamech. And Lamech took unto him two wives. Then the name of the one was Adah, and the name of the other Zillah. Now, oh. and Adah bare Jabal. He was a father of such as dwell in tents, and of such as have cattle. And his brother's name was Jubal. He was the father of all such as handle the harp and organ. And Zillah, she also bare Tubal Cain. Tubal Cain, an instructor of every artificer in brass and iron. An instructor of every artificer in brass and iron. So Cain's line is the one of which iron is first mentioned. Now, when you're an artificer, you're, I mean, you're more than just uh, somebody that fashions pots or weapons or whatever. You know, you're talking art. And the sister of Tubal came was Naamah. So, let's keep going. Let's go back to Daniel 7. Uh, so, and this I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible, and strong exceedingly, and it had great iron teeth, and it devour and break in pieces, and stamp the residue with the feet of it, and it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. I considered the whole horns, and behold, there came up among them another little horn, before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots, and behold, in the horn 
were eyes like the eyes of a man and a mouth speaking great things. I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit, whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like the pure wool. Now remember that. He, that you're talking about the ancient, ancient of Days. His garment was white as snow. The hair of his head was the pure wool. His throne was like the fiery flame and his wheels as burning fire. So who is this? Let's go to Revelation chapter 1. All right, Revelation chapter 1. Let's start in verse 9 because I'm just trying to do a recap here. Uh, the next lesson, I'm going to identify who in time Babylon is. So, we're just doing a recap and probably identify some of the characteristics. All right, Revelation chapter 1, verse 9. I, John, who, am, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation, and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was in the isle that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. Do you realize that John, this John, is the only one of the disciples that didn't die for his faith? Uh, and according to legend, they tried to kill him and couldn't. They even poured boiling oil or water on him, I forget which, and he wouldn't die. <laughs> so, you know, and, and this is the John that um, he was called uh, the beloved disciple of Jesus. So, he says in verse 10, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet saying, I am Alpha and Omega the first and the last. And what thou seest, write in a book, and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus. Paul wrote a, a book, uh, a, a letter to uh, Ephesus. It was called the book of Ephesians, right? Unto Ephesus, and unto Smyrna, and unto Pergamos, and unto Thyatira, and unto Sardius, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me, and being, and, and being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man. Didn't Jesus call himself the Son of Man? Oh, yeah. Clothed with a varmint, a garment, clothed with a garment, not a varmint, clothed with a garment down to the foot and gird about the paps with a golden girdle. His head and his hairs, his head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice as the voice of many waters. Ah, isn't that what we just read in Daniel 7 about the, uh, the Ancient of Days? It said the hair of his head was like pure wool. Oh, yeah. All right, in Revelation 7, oh, let's see, verse 9, After this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds and People and tongues stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. Well, didn't we just read that uh, the Ancient of Days in Daniel 7, 9, it said his garment was as white as snow? Okay. But in verse 13, Revelation 7, 13, And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes, and whence came they? Verse 14, And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, These are they which came out of great tribulation, 
and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Okay. Want to have those white robes, people. All right, let's go back to Daniel 7. Uh, let's see. I guess verse 9. I'm, I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit, whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like the pure wool. His throne was like the fiery flame, and his wheels as burning fire. Daniel 7, verse 10. A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. Thousand thousands ministered unto him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The judgment was set, and the books were opened. People, make sure you're in the Lamb's book of life. I beheld then, because of the voice of the great words which the horn spake, I beheld even till the beast was slain, and his body destroyed, and given to the burning flame. A good tied in uh, companion verse to this is, in my opinion, is Ezekiel chapter 28. Uh, verse 12. Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, Thou sealest up the sum, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Now, are they talking about a human king here or the power behind the king? Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering. The sardius, topaz, and the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold. The workmanship of thy tabrets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou wast created. Not born, created. Verse 14. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth. What's a cherub? It's an angel. He was the anointed angel that covered the throne of God. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day that thou wast created, till iniquity was found in thee. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Therefore I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee. And I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee. Thou hast defiled thy sanctuaries by the multitude of thine iniquities, by the iniquity of thy traffic. Therefore, listen carefully, therefore will I bring forth a fire from the midst of thee. Therefore will I bring forth a fire from the midst of thee, and it shall devour thee. thee. It shall devour thee, and I will bring thee to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all them that behold thee. All they that know thee among the people shall be astonished at thee. Thou shalt be a terror, and never shalt thou be any more. Does that sound like it matches Daniel 7, verse 11? I beheld them because of the voice of the great words which the horn spake. I beheld even till the beast was slain, and his body destroyed and given to the burning flame. As concerning the rest of the beasts, they had their dominion taken away, yet their lives were prolonged for a season and a time. And I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven, oh yeah, and came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. You know, uh, 
Christ is going to be coming in the clouds. I did an entire series on that, people. Just just do a search bar on Chaplain Bob and clouds. Or send me any, uh, a message and I'll give you the link. A whole playlist on clouds. Uh, let's see. Verse 14. And there was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away and his, and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. I, Daniel, was grieved in my spirit in the midst of my body and the visions of my head troubled me. See, people, they're talking about the everlasting kingdom there. Christ's kingdom. Verse 16. I came near unto one of them that stood by and asked him the truth of all this. So he told me and made me know the interpretation of the things. These great beasts, which are four, are four kings which shall arise out of the earth. But... The saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. How long is that, people? Forever, eternity. Then I would know the truth of the fourth beast, which was diverse from all the others, exceeding dreadful, whose teeth were of iron and his nails of brass, which devoured, break in pieces, and stamped the residue with his feet. And of the ten horns that were in his head, and of the other which came up, and before whom three fell, even of that horn that had eyes and a mouth that spake very great things, whose look was more stout than his fellows. I beheld, and the same horn made war with the saints, and prevailed against them. Where have I read that before? Well, let's go to Revelation chapter twelve, seventeen. And the dragon was wroth. He was mad. He was angry. And the dragon was wroth with the woman. Who's the woman? The church? Israel, people. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war. War with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. See, Satan doesn't care if you keep the commandments, if you don't have the testimony of Jesus. And what good is having the testimony of Jesus if you don't keep the commandments? I mean, Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Right? Well, that's what he said. Verse, uh, Revelation 13, 14. And they worshipped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. What beast? The fourth beast, right? The Daniel. And they worshipped the beast, saying, who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? Ah, so that's a good question. Verse 5, And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name in his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. All right, let's go back to Daniel 7, verse 21. I beheld in the same horn made war with the saints and prevailed against them. Until the ancient of days came, the ancient of days came, we're talking Christ here, and judgment was given to the saints of the Most High, and the time came that the saints possessed the kingdom. Thus he said, the fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon the earth, which shall be diverse from all kingdoms and shall devour the whole earth and shall tread it down and break it in pieces. And the ten horns out of this kingdom are ten kings that shall arise and another shall rise after them and he shall be diverse from the first and he shall subdue 
three kings. And he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws. And they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and the dividing of time. That's about 42 months. A time is a year, people. So he's going to be given a year and times. That's two, which one plus two is three, and the dividing of time. So that's three and a half years. But the judgment shall, uh, verse 26, but the judgment shall sit, and they shall take away his dominion to consume and to destroy it unto the end. And the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominions shall serve and obey him. Hitherto is the end of the matter. As for me, Daniel, my cogitations much troubled me, and my countenance changed to me, but I kept the matter in my heart. All right, let's take a look at Revelation chapter 17. I guess we'll go to verse 1. And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. See, this great whore is in contrast to the bride of Christ. You know, Christ doesn't want to marry a whore. Christ wants a chaste virgin, which uh, the church, if you can call it that today, is in sorry shape, my opinion anyways. And uh, trust me, um, I'm not elevating myself in any way, shape, or form. Verse 2, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, spiritual fornication with this whore, right? And the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me, so he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast. Same beast that Daniel was reading about or talking about full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand, full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And um, let's see, let's skip down verse 14. These shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them, for he is Lord of lords and King of kings, and they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. And he said unto me, The waters which thou sawest where the whore sitteth are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore. Ah, the ten horns which you saw upon the beast, right? These are going to hate the whore. And shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh, and burn her with fire. For God hath put in their hearts to fulfill his will, and to agree and give their kingdom unto the beast, until the words of God shall be fulfilled. And the woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. Very important. And the woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. I think the next uh, Bible study I do to conclude this series, I'm hoping, we're going to identify that city that reigns over the king of the earth, kings of the earth. All right, let's see. Now, I'm take a look at uh, Revelation chapter 14 and verse 8. And there followed another angel saying, 
Babylon is fallen, is fallen. Why say that twice? Well, Babylon fell once physically, and the second time it's going to fall spiritually. At least that's my interpretation. I could be wrong, but I don't know. Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Isaiah 21, verse 9. And behold, here cometh a chariot of men and a uh, couple of horsemen. And he answered and said, Babylon is fallen, is fallen. And all the graven images of her gods he hath broken unto the ground. Ah, graven images of her gods. Remember that, people, because we're going to go to uh, the image of the beast. The graven images of her gods. Revelation 18, verse 2. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. All right, let's take a look at Revelation 13. Maybe I should read the whole thing. And I, Verse 1, And I stood upon the sand of the sea. Remember the waters, people, that the horse sits on? And saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, just like in Daniel. And upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. Oh yeah. So he's going he's gonna to talk like he's the lion of the tribe of Judah, but he's not. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. Oh yeah, they're going to wonder after the beast. And they worshipped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. And they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God, to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Yeah, I know we just read this not long ago. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. In other words, if it's God's will for you to go to be captive, taken captive, and to die for the faith, that's your, that's your lot in life. He says, he that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. So if they come to take you away, and you fight them, and you kill them, by that method, you'll be killed. At least that's how I understand this. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. So if you're supposed to be taken captive and get your head cut off for Christ, just remember, people, that's, yeah, that's a guaranteed ticket to heaven, period. Verse 11, And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had... Two horns like a lamb. Oh, yeah, he's going to try to be a, the lamb of God. And he spake as a dragon. And he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. And he doeth great wonders. Oh, yeah, he's going to do miracles, people. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, 
saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image, that they should make an image to the beast. Ah, see, there's going to be idolatry. That they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Every time I read this, I think of television. I, I don't know. You know, I could be wrong. So, you see, in Babylon, in King Nebuchadnezzar, remember he set up that large statue with the head of gold and the breast of silver and, uh, you know, I think the his midsection was brass and the legs were iron and then the feet, the toes were iron and clay. Uh, that was in, I think, study one or study two of this series. But uh, he made an image. Didn't we just read about an image? People worshiping the images of their gods? And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. Ooh. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Here is wisdom, let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred, three score, and six. Six, 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 people. Let me tell you something. This is, you're swearing allegiance to the devil. I mean, that's what it is. You know, you worship the beast, the image of the beast. You take his mark. I mean, I mean that's it, people. You know, personally, uh, what would you rather have? The uh, mark of the beast or the seal of God? Personally, I'd rather have the seal of God. But, uh, all right, contrast the mark of the beast with... Uh, Let's go to Revelation chapter 9, verse 1. And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth. And to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit, as the smoke of a great furnace. And the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and unto them was given, great, was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. Now, and it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. So, what would you rather have in your forehead? Mark of the beast or the seal of God? Hard choice, really, you know. Uh, what can I tell you, people? And, it, and to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months. Uh, those that don't have the seal of God, that they're the ones going to be tormented. And their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he striketh a man. And in those days shall men seek death and shall not find it, and shall desire to die and death shall flee from them. Oh boy. So, I think this is going to close out uh, part four. And uh, just remember, this kingdom is going to be very powerful. It's going to encompass the entire earth. Uh, just like in Babylon of old, there's going to be an image and you're going to have a mark. And you won't be able to buy or sell unless you have it. Some people say it's spiritual. Other people say, well, you know, maybe it's a microchip. You know, I don't know for sure. I wouldn't be surprised if it's a microchip. Uh, matter of fact, 
if you've got a real ID, uh, driver's license or identification, there's a microchip in it. You have a passport, a new passport, there's a microchip in it. You got an ATM card, chip card, they call it. You got a credit card, chip card. You know, suppose one day they decide, well, you know, you could lose your, uh, your ID, you could lose your credit card. Hey, let's, let's, let's combine the uh, identification and the banking system so that you can't buy or sell without it. And, uh, you know, we'll put the chip in their hand. You know, be, it's kind of hard to lose your hand, you know, or, or your forehead, you know. Uh, I don't know. And believe it or not, I've been looking at this since 1990. Um, they've been chipping dogs. They chip cattle. Um, companies are starting to chip their employees. Sweden is chipping people. They're proud of it. Oh, we're a cashless society, they're trying to be. I don't know, people. Things are getting real. Can you imagine when you can't buy or sell unless you have the mark? Think about it. I mean, uh, the uh, banks, our banks are cutting people's bank accounts off because they don't like their politics or their business. There's people that have uh, businesses that has to deal with firearms, and they just hold their money. You know, it's just one day they say, well, pff, we got your money and you can't have it. We don't like your business. You know, think about it. All right, well, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, I'm going to do the attributes to try to find out where the who the great city is uh, in the next part, and we're going to identify it from using the scriptures alone and find out who's the city that reigns over the kingdom of men. Oh, yeah, who is it? Some people say New York City. Others say Rome. Some say Jerusalem. Uh, Moscow. Uh, you know, they're all built on seven hills, I hear. Well, I don't know if New York is, but I heard Washington, D.C. is built on seven hills. Um, we'll find out. So, all right. Take care. Goodbye.